inventory control module is used to control a consumable inventory, such as office supplies, cleaning and maintenance supplies, raw materials for production, and so on. With perpetual inventory levels at your fingertips, you can eliminate stockouts, reduce inventory carrying costs, and simplify the reordering process. The inventory control module is not used to manage a fixed inventory like computers, furniture, equipment, or vehicles. For that, you should be using the asset management module instead. When you receive items and when you take items out of stock, the inventory levels in spend map will be updated automatically. Since SpendMap knows how much stock you have at any point in time, you won't have to do a physical inventory count whenever you need to make a decision that's based on an item's current inventory levels, like deciding what needs to be reordered or when you need to know the dollar value of what's in stock. In addition, with better inventory visibility and the ability to quickly and easily generate orders to replenish stock, you can reduce the amount of inventory that you maintain as a buffer, thereby reducing carrying costs. We'll talk more about stock replenishment in a couple minutes. Finally, while there are those that would argue for maintaining no inventory at all, many SpendMap customers have come to realize that the cost benefits of buying in bulk far outweigh any inventory carrying costs, especially in a low interest rate environment when money's cheap. In addition to volume discounts and lower shipping costs when buying in bulk, you can also spread the per order administrative costs across a larger quantity of items. For example, the administrative costs of processing an order from initial requisition all the way through to final invoice approval can be as much as $100 per order in a manual environment and around $30 per order in an automated environment. Obviously, if someone only needs a box of paper clips, it's far less expensive to get them off a shelf than it is to create a new order for this type of low-value item. Okay, first things first, you need to tell SpendMap which items you plan to keep in stock. So in the inventory folder of the item master file, you can indicate which items you keep in stock using this checkbox. If you don't check this box, the in-stock balance of the item will remain at zero and the item won't show on any inventory related reports. You can then fill in these fields like your min-max levels, whether the item's kept in multiple inventory locations or warehouses, and so on. When inventory items are received, your in-stock balance would typically be increased by the quantity received. I say typically because it is possible that you purchase an item to give directly to an end user rather than purchasing the item to replenish stock, in which case inventory levels will not be updated when the item is received. We call this a direct charge. So if you specify a stock cost center or account code when receiving, stock levels will be increased, but if you use a non-stock or end user cost center, stock levels will not be updated. When inventory usages are processed, the item's stock levels will be reduced and the value of the item will be charged to the cost center's history and budget. Remember, the term cost center is user-definable in SpendMap and can be renamed to track charges to just about anything, most commonly a department or a project. So just like the physical item remains in stock until the usage is processed, the value of the item will also be kept in stock temporarily until the item is given to the end user, at which point they'll be charged for the item. Aside from depleting stock levels and charging a cost center, the inventory usage will also update the item's history and will also show on the usage log and many other reports in the system. I'm going to enter a usage manually, but there are many other areas in SpendMap that'll post inventory usages for you automatically, like when you fill requisitions from stock. You can get to the usage work area using this toolbar button or this menu choice. If you only need to enter one or two usages, you can also use the quick usage option rather than the work area. If you're going to be entering a high volume of usages, you can also scan your items to reduce data entry and speed up the process, otherwise just fill in the screen starting with the item code. So I'll take some of these brochures out of stock for a trade show that the marketing department's hosting. So that's it. As you can see down here, we have 400 of these brochures in stock, and after this usage is processed, there'll only be 300 left. So let's take a look at the item's history card. And here's the usage transaction that we just posted. And if we look at the history of the marketing department, you can see that they were charged $27 for these supplies. As your stock gets depleted, eventually you need to replenish your inventory. Rather than dealing with one item at a time, most SpendMap customers make stock replenishment part of their weekly or bi-weekly routine to get some economies of scale for order processing and maybe save on some shipping costs. And remember, since SpendMap maintains a perpetual inventory, you won't have to do a physical inventory count to figure out which items you need to reorder. So there are two ways to create orders to replenish your stock. 
If you like, you can just run the inventory reorder or forecast reports, and then use the information on the reports to enter purchase orders, requisitions, or other documents in your work areas manually. Better yet, you can use the item requirements staging batch to automatically create purchase orders or other documents for items that have fallen below their minimum stock reorder levels. For complete details, take a look at the online help. Okay, as we've said, SpinMap will automatically update its perpetual inventory levels as transactions are processed. Nevertheless, there's going to be times that you'll need to manually adjust your stock levels as well. The two most common reasons would be when first implementing the system, since you have to tell SpendMap what your starting inventory is, and also most companies will do a physical inventory count at least once or twice a year to account for things like inventory shrinkage or theft. So take a quick look at the Inventory Adjustments menu group. If you only need to adjust stock for one or a few items, like if something was broken for example, you can use this option, but if you're going to be counting your entire inventory, you can use the Inventory Count Work Area. As with inventory usages, you can scan your items if you're using the optional barcode module, or you can manually add the items and count information into the batch. To clarify, you should be entering the actual quantity that you have in stock here, not the quantity by which you want to adjust your stock. SpendMap will compare what you enter here to the system's record, and will post whatever adjusting entry is needed to bring your stock to the level that you enter here. Once you process the batch, the end result will look something like this. In addition to keeping track of who used what and simplifying the reorder process, another popular benefit of the inventory control module is the improved visibility that SpendMap provides by way of its many reports. One of the most popular reports is the inventory valuation report. Remember, since SpendMap knows what you have in stock at any moment in time, you don't necessarily have to do a physical inventory count each and every time you want to report on the value of your stock. Finally, with respect to the valuation method that SpendMap uses to calculate the value of your stock, you can specify that in the Inventory Options area. So those are the basics of how you can manage a consumable inventory with SpendMap. And remember, if you'd like to make faster progress, our client services group is always here to help with personalized support and training services.